Yeah. I go where I want good. Yeah. I go where I want good. Yeah. I go where I want good. Hey girl. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Or if this is your first time seeing my face, welcome. If this is your first time seeing my face by the title, you already see what it is about. This will be like my second puppy related video. I honestly was planning to make my second puppy video to be like first 24 hours with puppy, first day with puppy, bring him home, get all the shots of him being familiarized with the house and all that. But honey, when I tell you, when we got home, reality set in and it was definitely more about being present versus having the camera like this. So I'm sorry, <laughs> this is not a day in the life or first 24 hours, but what this is and what I want to have here just as like a moment in time, something people can learn from, something I can look back on is the realistic first week of a puppy parent, okay? For me, from my experience. <laughs> I don't care how many videos I have seen online, how many blogs I have read, how many self-help training tips, all the things that I'm talking, not even months, but like years of research before I decided to be a puppy mom. Nothing is ever going to fully prepare you for how to take care of your puppy, how things are going to be with your pup, like the real life experience you get in the moment that they come home. I will say that for the past over a week or so since he has come home, I have felt like it is just puppy puppy, puppy, puppy. My own personal focus, <laughs> struggles, priorities have honestly been on the back burner. I honestly just haven't really paused and taken any real intentional time on myself, my own priorities, <laughs> struggles, and things that make me feel good. So I wanna take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Stitch Fix, because it was just the pick me up that I needed. Stitch Fix is a personal styling service for men, women, and kids. It's super simple to use. You take a quick, easy quiz that allows you to share your style preference the service is on demand and you receive a box of five items that align with your style based on your quiz results now this is something that is super super new for me so here is why I love stitch fix when it comes to my style I'm super black and white all I think about is comfortability so it's not often that I get out of my comfort zone their site definitely encourages you to try something new the cherry on top for me are the different categories and you know that I love a good black owned section like this tabitha double ruffle mini dress by megan renee it is giving me everything that i did not know i needed with stitch fix you can try before you buy keep what you love and send back the rest and you only pay for what you keep and you'll get 25 percent off if you decide to keep all five items in your fix so if you're looking to step up your style use the link in my description box to get 20 dollars off of your first fix and again, I want to thank Stitch Fix for sponsoring today's video. This year is a year of many things for me, y'all. Part of that is getting out, stepping out of my comfort zone. That dress, honey, it's getting worn. It's getting worn. All right, y'all. So let's just hop straight into it. I don't have anything written down or a specific plan of how I'm going to share this, but I do feel like it is very important to kind of share a more realistic experience. Not that other people's experiences are not realistic it might be very real for them and also not that my experience has been terrible but it has personally threw me off and, and shocked me from what I thought I was prepared for so hopefully it can help somebody else okay so let me first say sage is the sweetest little thing like he is the sweetest little thing there are so many things i feel like i don't want to speak too soon because he's so good in so many areas but when it comes to being responsible for an entire living i know i know okay so i'm gonna go through the timeline without dragging it out but also sharing key points that i want to hit on boom first things first we flew to get him we drove back the drive back was 10 hours, 10 plus hours to be honest, because we rented a Tesla on the way back. So we had to stop at the, like the charging stations, which kind of added an extra 20 minutes per charge. We did that probably like four or five times. But let me say this, until the very, very end, and we're talking 10 plus hours for a puppy, he was perfect in the car, y'all. 
he didn't throw up. Puppies, animals in general, tend to throw up in cars for short distances, let alone a 10 hour drive. He did not throw up one time. I was watching him kind of telling Brianna like, I think he's gonna throw up, I think he's gonna throw up. But he didn't, he was so, so good on the drive. He just sat in my lap and he just chilled. I think it was really just like a lot for him. What's going on, where am I going? He just left his brothers and sisters. Mind you, when I first got him, I was immediately sad. <laughs> like so many waves of emotions hit me that I didn't think would hit me. When we went to get him, we got in the car and we started heading back and I'm just looking at him and I'm like, oh my God. I'm gonna try and really breeze by here because I can see myself getting emotional. <laughs> I'm an empath, don't judge me. <laughs> but we are not crying in this video. But when I looked at him, I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, like, what is he feeling? All he knows is his brothers and sisters. He just probably is super confused and feeling all kinds of things. And think about these little animals and these puppies, they can't tell you what it is. So I was like feeling what I thought he was feeling, so I was sad. <laughs> I was happy to have him, but I was sad. I got over that, right? We had a long drive. He did really, really good in the car. When we got home, we did not get home until like maybe three, four o'clock in the morning. So that whole bring your puppy home, get him acquainted with the space and all that, it really didn't exist because by the time we got here, the day was done actually. The sun was starting to come out for the next day. So what we had to do was really just take a quick nap, get up, and that was really what I consider to be like our first day together. Now, I am crate training sage. Everybody has their opinions on crate training, but I am not using puppy pads in the house. The goal for me in my house is that we go potty outside. I feel like if I put potty pads down, that is telling you that if you can't do here, you can go here. I don't want you to feel like you can go in here at all. So we've had a couple of accidents. He's peed a couple times in the house. I'm cautious to say these things because for the first two days, he didn't even pee. Now, I will take some credit. I was taking him out and I have been taking him out like every two hours. Sometimes I'll do it even before then. I have been super, super on top of it. I'm thankful because I work from home. So it's a little bit easier for me to do that. But potty training has been probably one of the easiest things with him. Although he's had a couple of accidents, every single time that it's happened, in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, I could have took him out. We just played real hard or he just drank, he just ate. So that was really my fault. Potty training has been great. He has not once gone potty in his crate. No pee, no poo-poo or anything. I think I made it just the right size to where it's comfortable and he doesn't feel like he has enough space to poop over here, lay over here. Like I said, this might be a little all over the place, but I'm trying to keep it in order so that it makes sense. I wanted to share that he's really, really good with the potty. He does really, really good with a lot of things, but here for me is where I kind of felt <laughs> Now, I don't wanna jump around too much, but I did wanna mention that why that was on my mind. I think I got lucky with him when it comes to pottying, and I just, I know we're still very, very early in, y'all, but he has been doing so good, and I am so proud of him when it comes to pottying. Now, let's talk about the first, I would say, two full days of him being here. I think something happens that a lot of people don't really talk about. Some do, but not most, is the overwhelming rush of emotion that comes over you when you get home and that puppy's sitting there and he's looking you in your eyes and you are looking him in the eyes and you're like, oh my God, I am responsible for your life and I could mess this up. And I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna show you him in a minute, but I gotta get all this stuff out first, okay? <laughs> I did so much excessive research. I was so obsessive in my research that I myself was watching videos of puppy blues. If you're not familiar with that, it's a long definition and Google it and look up videos for it. My purpose for watching them was to prepare myself for all the emotions that I could possibly feel. And while watching them, I'm like, no, taking my puppy back is just not an option. So 
I know, you know, that this is the normal thing. I, I shouldn't have to worry about that now. I've not had any feelings of wanting to take him back. I haven't had any regrets on getting a puppy. This is a part of my journey. Like, there's no doubts in that. But the biggest overwhelming feeling for me is like, oh my gosh, am I going to mess this puppy up? Am I going to train him enough? Am I gonna spend too much time with them? What if I don't spend enough time with them? You can hear him whimpering a little bit, but we are working on not forming true separation anxiety, and I'll get into that in a little bit as well. But I really just had an overwhelming feeling of not necessarily regret, definitely not regret, but questioning myself and if I can do it, if that makes sense. And I'm telling you, the feelings were so overwhelming to the point where I would literally just be in tears. The first two days, I was, I felt very, very sad. <laughs> I felt so emotional. My sister would call me and she laughed at me too. Hey, get down. <laughs> Y'all, he has the new thing, okay? The new thing, the new thing is climbing on my couch, okay? And we can't have that. Not right now while you're not fully potty trained. Y'all need to see this. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him on my couch. Look at him on my couch. And he know he's not supposed to be up there. You know how I know he knows is he only gets up there either when I am behind the baby gates, okay? And upstairs when I am not around or can I access him? He hops on my couch. Any suggestions for that, please let me know. I know there are commands, down, off, all that. When I'm not with him, he won't listen because I obviously can't reach him. I obviously can't put him down. He doesn't take me seriously at all when I am at a distance. I think I'm gonna have to get a playpen. I really wanted to avoid that, just like an extra thing, but it will allow him to have space, but not be cooped up in a crate, I don't know. What do y'all think? Tell me what you think about that. I'm already getting off track. Yeah, emotions, okay? Cause it's just emotions taking me over. Caught up in sorrow, <laughs> lost in the storm, okay? <laughs> My initial approach for crate training was the cry it out method. The cry it out method, just put them in, go to bed. They're gonna cry it out. They're gonna feel how they feel, but it will eventually die down. That's what I tried the very first time. Nighttime came, I put him in the crate, I locked it. The moment I shut the gate, he immediately started yelping and crying and screaming. And in my mind, I'm like, this is a part of the process, which it is, it's a part of the process. I went upstairs, I laid down, and he literally cried for the majority of the night. There are a few times he stopped, but he cried for the majority of the night. I don't know how people, I mean, I could have easily, I don't know, put in some headphones or shut the door because I don't have a small house, but I didn't feel, I felt like I needed to hear him when he was in such stress. It was so hard to just sit through because I felt his fear, you know, I felt like he, he didn't know what was going on. And obviously that's why he was crying and doing all of that. But I stayed strong, y'all. The first night I went down, I let him out potty. I probably let him out potty three times. So probably like every two hours I went down there, let him out. Every single time I came down, he hurt me move at all. He's immediately screaming, barking. The moment I he hears me coming downstairs. When I went to the gate, he's yelping, crying, climbing on the gate. I let him out and each time I pick him up, take him out to potty, bring him back, put him back in. The moment I put him back in, he's crying and screaming again. And that was honestly the first two nights. In my mind, I'm thinking like, okay, cry it out. They're gonna have to get used to it. It is a part of potty training. But if they're just excessively screaming and crying and just like, just, it just didn't feel right for me. So I was like doing a little bit more research on like different approaches. Sage is a very, very gentle boy. Not when he's biting. Okay, when I say gentle boy, he's very gentle natured. He'll snuggle up on me. If he's tired, I can just like lay him on me and he just kind of like snuggles there. I can grab his face and just play with his ears and he just sits there and lets me do it. He's a very, he's a very, very sweet boy to the core. So I kind of started researching different methods and in my mind, I'm like, what? What can I do that might fit better with his personality or like, 
kind of reassure him or make him feel better. On the third night, I think it was the third night, probably third or fourth night after those first two nights, there has already been so much progress on this journey, y'all. So please don't take this as a, a negative thing or a don't get a puppy. This is really just the reality of things you might face. And I hope that it's also something to give you hope that if you focus on trial and error and you really just try to tailor what you do to your puppy, because along the way you're gonna get so much advice, I guess even on this video, you really have to remember to take what applies because there's not one thing that's going to work for every single pet, okay? So I said, okay, I'm gonna try a different approach. I start looking online. They have like machines that are recommended for babies and pets with like white noise and music. I didn't have the time to wait for any of that <laughs> to come to my house. I needed to get a good night's sleep and also bring some peace to my puppy immediately. So I went on YouTube and I pulled up like a 10 hour white noise video. That night when I saw he was kind of like chilling, unwinding, laying on the floor and kind of like falling asleep. What I did was, is I turned on the white noise on YouTube. So that was playing, turned all the lights off. So it was very dark. I picked him up very slowly, okay? He was kind of like, what you doing? What's going, on? what's going on? But he was there, picked him up and I put him into the crate. Now, when I put him in the crate, he did pop up, not, a, you know, like in alert because he was already tired, but he did kind of pop up and look at me, but I slowly closed the crate and I sat there with him just for a couple of minutes. I just sat there until he relaxed and laid back down. He kind of was still looking at me, but he was laying there. He was laying there, he wasn't crying, he wasn't in distress. So calmly, I just took that little shade and I put it down to block out all of the lights. And then I walked away and I went upstairs. And what I heard, I did hear a few whimpers. I did hear a few whimpers for a couple of minutes, but he went straight to sleep, y'all. He went straight to sleep. And what that did for me, it was kind of like a very, very proud moment. I know I'm gonna have like many, many moments where it's like, you're making progress, you're, you're doing the right thing. That right there was the first like real reassurance that, okay, you can do this. <laughs> Even throughout the night, I think he like popped up and whimpered a couple of times. That night, we only had two potty breaks. He did good, didn't potty in the crate. Went down there, took him out. And honestly, y'all, for the past week, it really has become a routine. And it's really all about routines, especially as young as they are. They're super impressionable. It's our job to kind of mold them and do the repetitive things and that's how they learn this is the way things are. Now at nighttime when it's time to go to bed, I turn on that white noise, I pick him up. Sometimes he sleeps, sometimes he's not, but I put him in. It takes him a couple of seconds to just lay back down because he's like, okay, we're going to bed. Put him in, shut the gate, close it. He don't whimper at all. We just go to bed. So that right there, I am just super, super thankful for because I know that it's not that easy for a lot of people. So if you're struggling with that, my recommendation is pay attention to the personality of the puppy that you have. If your puppy is constantly screaming and yelling and barking, and it doesn't stop, then it might be time to take a different approach because I know that it's stressful, not just for you, but for the puppy as well. You think you ain't getting no sleep? He's not sleeping while he's doing that either. And that distress that they are associating with either the crate or you can come out in so many different ways. So that is what has helped me. Maybe that will help somebody else. Anything that I mention as well, please feel free to share y'all suggestions. Honestly, like I said, my channel will not turn into a puppy channel, but I will have puppy updates as he literally is almost all of my life right now. Like realistically, I have to put so much focus because this is a crucial time in his growth and development. So yeah, <laughs> we will have puppy videos, um, but I want them to be more of like placeholders, a community, an area for respectful conversation, suggestions, and tips from experience. So please allow the comment section on these type of videos to be just that. I want it to be a place that is helpful for us. What else, what else? I was also overwhelmed with the whole training. It's like you, you want to train all of these commands and you're like, how much time do I have to do this? He knows sit, he knows down. Down is a little iffy, okay? I'm taking things one at a time. I am actively reminding myself not to overthink it, 
do the best that I can and just focus on the progress that we're making. So he had his first vet visit. Sage is a crier though. He is a crier and we are working on that. When I go and get his food, he is whining. He is crying every single time when he hears that little thing turn. He loves people. When I took him to the vet, he was all over everybody. But the moment that they left, he starts to whimper. So we're working on that. If you got any tips, let me know. He is a people's boy. When he first got here, he was kind of picky with food. Like he would sniff stuff, not really mess with it. I had to remember that things like treats and stuff that I'm introducing him to, he has no idea what it is. He's never had it before. Like he's doing so many firsts with me. So he's cautious with a lot of stuff, but I'm now learning the things that he does like and the things that he doesn't like. Y'all, he'd be low key using the training bell to go potty. And I say low key, because he also tries to play me with it as well. I say 70% of the time when he taps that bell, he actually has to potty. I take him out and he goes immediately. But sometimes he'll tap it just so he can go outside and play. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing to have there because I can't be running outside every five minutes, but I also want him to really, really learn that. Maybe that's something that as he gets older, he won't try to manipulate it or he might try to manipulate even more. Does anybody bell train? Do you bell train your puppy? Your dog, let me know. I feel like he is so young to be doing that, but he will literally tap it and sit there. And I will pick him up and take him outside and he will pee. It's, it's things like that that I'm like, I really can't complain because he's such a good boy. <laughs> now with him being such a good boy and making progress, y'all, we are reaching different levels. So let me tell you what level he is at right now. And this part is really, really getting me. So any suggestions will help. This boy is biting, biting, biting me specifically. <laughs> I cannot move these legs. I cannot move these feet slow or fast enough for him to really just go straight at him and just wanna bite my ankles, bite my toes, bite my feet. Now I'm working to redirect it. I'll take the treats. Our word is no bite, no bite. There are some times where I'll say that and he'll stop. It just depends on how much energy he actually has, but he is biting like crazy y'all and the bites hurt. Like a puppy bite sounds like a puppy bite until it catches you by surprise and you are screaming low key close to tears. He has bit me very, very hard like that before. So please let me know if anything that works for y'all for that. I'm pretty sure it's gonna take time and I am still going to continue to just focus on my no bite command, but any suggestions would be helpful. He also is now, y'all have seen on this video, hopping on my couch. Hopping on my couch, now he's just too little, not potty trained enough. It's been wet outside, my cream furniture. We're, we're not at that point where I'm comfortable with you just being on the couch. So I think I'm gonna have to get a playpen. I think that's really realistically the only way to remedy that right now because I'll stay down and sometimes he'll get down, but also sometimes he'll just hop up on the couch and look me in my face like, well, what are you gonna do? You know what I mean? And I'll pick him up and put him down, pick him up and put him down. It's just a repetitive of me doing that. So please give me any suggestions for that as well. Realistically, I'm just not always right on top of him, but I have the living room baby gated off because the crate is for crate training. It's not for him to sit in a crate all day. Realistically, he's gonna have full access to this house at some point when he is fully trained and older. And what I would like to continue to do, which is what I have been doing the past few days, is while I am working upstairs, allowing him to be in the front room and I have a camera on him. When I go upstairs, he hops on my couch, y'all. He ups on my couch. Now you can say, oh, I'll take him into the office with you. I could do that. But that is where separation anxiety control comes in. So it's really about balance, y'all. It is trial and error. I'm just sharing some of the things that I'm doing. Just brainstorming, you know, just throwing it out there. If any puppy parents have any suggestions or tips, and also maybe to give any ideas to someone who might be getting a puppy, has a puppy, are looking for tips yourself. I will say my weekly review of having Sage for now, it's probably been like 10 or 11 days. So we are past the week now. He just got finished eating a sweet potato chew and crying. And now I'm pretty sure he's in there laying down sleep. So when I go in there and bring him over here, y'all better appreciate that. That means I am waking the beast out of his slumber. <laughs> but yeah, y'all, that's my weekly review. I'm sure I'll probably give y'all, this is like a pup date. 
pup date. Oh, it's my first pup date. That's what we'll probably put in the title. Pup date. One week realistic <laughs> pup date. I've already honestly learned so much about myself <laughs> in such a little bit of time. I thought I had patience before, but I am learning a completely different level of patience that I know that I actually probably need in my own personal life journey. Like I said before, it really hasn't been much about me personally since I've had him. I had to really lock in and create a routine so that he feels comfortable here. So now I need to create a routine for the both of us to excel, okay? Because mama's got goals, mama's got things, and mama has a life as well. <laughs> and I know that I kind of breezed past the puppy blue part, because honestly it didn't last as long as a lot of stories that I hear. I also am not sure if the feeling is gonna come back. You know what I'm saying? It's still very early, but I will say that the first two days I was having complete breakdowns. I would get a call from somebody super excited to meet the puppy and they're super, super happy and they wanna know, how is it going? The question, how is it going, broke me down to the point where I'm like, I don't know how it's going. I hope I'm doing this right. It was it was very, very overwhelming. So if you're having those feelings, I also had a feeling of, oh my gosh, I have spent the majority of my life only having to focus on myself. Like I, I, I created this little bubble for myself where I have freedom and I it's just me and I am my own responsibility that just having a complete life that you have to take care of it's it's a lot it's definitely a lot to take in but i will say it's something that it's kind of inevitable it's i think it's kind of like a wave that has to pass through you in order for you to be able to kind of find some type of ease with how you're gonna move forward with it. My living room became cluttered with puppy stuff and when I tried to clean it up, he would follow the broom and do all of that. So I'd have to put him in the crate and then he'd go crazy to the point where I'd come in the kitchen just to breathe and then I'd break down because I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> That was the first two days for me. But we began to learn each other. I am learning him, he is learning me. I can tell that he's comfortable with me. I can tell that he trusts me. He, all, he follows me everywhere that I go, which is another thing that I'm like, do you ever get used to this? I feel like an inconvenience to him because I'm like, you were asleep, all I did was move. So do I tiptoe around the house or do I continue to make the noise so that he's used to it? It's all the things. I'm not gonna go on a tangent. That was my first week with Sage, y'all. Let me go and get him so y'all can see him real quick, okay? Hold on. First of all, he farted and he stinks, okay? I'm sorry. Say hi, Puda Minions. Say hi, Puda. He was napping, y'all. I'm sorry, cause he was napping. I did interrupt his sleep, okay? This boy was asleep. Real quick, real quick, okay? You tired, stinker boy? He knows that he is no Z, okay? All right, y'all, so I shared the good and the bad. It has just been under two weeks since we have been together. So I know, I know that there are so many ups and so many downs that we are going to experience together. Huh, booty? Um, But A, I want this to be just like a little video I can come back to and see how far we have come, but also remind somebody that if you really feel like you are losing a girl, boy, if you feel like you can't do it. Now, sometimes there are situations where it's just not maybe in your interest or the pet's interest if you really, truly can't do it, but don't allow those overwhelming, super, super emotional waves, feelings deter you or stop you from putting forth your best effort. Like, there's no perfect way <laughs> to be a puppy parent. I think that sometimes we can watch all these videos. You ain't having it? You uncomfortable? Huh? He's tired, John. I'm not gonna have him in front of these lights for too long. Um, but let's just be a reminder not to be discouraged. Do your best. <laughs> Look, I'm no expert either, but look, I am working on being at peace with knowing that I am doing my best and knowing that it is simply going to be a nice trial and error. 
you know what it is he actually hasn't been in this room before either so he's probably like where are we what's going on don't get used to it because you ain't coming to my kitchen okay <laughs> don't be discouraged y'all this is my first week with sage this is my first week of cup date comment below let me know what you think oh sage has an instagram okay first of all when i posted him on my instagram he got more views than i have ever gotten in my how many years on ig you telling that that you just took over so he has his own instagram he's checking He's looking around right now is what he's doing. He, he's never been in this room before, but he's got his own Instagram. It is Sage the Sweet Boy. I'm just going to be posting him so that he doesn't completely take over my social media because mama's got things to do over there. Ain't that right? Say bye to your aunties and your uncles and all of our family. <laughs> I'm gonna get him away from these sites, y'all. Um, comment below, let's talk all puppy things. Um, wish me luck in the next phase. I have been focusing on Sage, Sage, Sage since he has gotten here. So now it's time to create a routine for the both of us. So that is next on our journey. Um, so any suggestions or tips that y'all have, let me know. Puri, come here, Puras. Come here, Puras. Puri boy. Ah, oh, Pura. That's all I got for y'all. I'm about to feed this boy, tire him out, and go to bed. Huh? Huh, pooty man? You like kisses from mama? Yeah. Yeah, he do. All right, y'all. We are out of here. Now that we're talking about the crate, he is digging into my couch. Hold on. Hold on. So I said, okay, I'm going to try... Okay, he's not digging into my couch. He's digging into his bed. And that's his. That's on him.